Perfect. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Mrs. Ramos, uh, principal here at Palmdale. Yes. What do you think of this extraordinary team? I have been a part of this program since the very inception when the students proposed the idea, and I am never uh, ceased to be amazed. They always outdo themselves every single year. They set goals for themselves and they're still far beyond it. And I have not seen the car until tonight, and I was speechless at this unveiling. So, some remarkable students here at Palmdale who do amazing things thanks to their great teachers and supporters. So, proud principal moment for sure. Ah, you should be. And uh, is it going to be continue part of the ag curriculum or is it's it actually part of our fast academy our falcon academy of sustainable technology oh okay in coordination with our ag program but it's a course that we offer on campus and it's supported by not only the district but the school site so we can continue to keep offering that and growing the program and there's already plans for a new car next year so. sure and what a, what a great uh, resume piece for the students trying to go to college. It's truly a career technical program. Sure. The kids are ready to enter college and careers. Get up early and drive me all the way over here. Sure, sure. Are you tied up? I shouldn't say tied up. That's. Are you linked to colleges that give credit? Extra credit? program at this point, no. But, no. Uh, we do offer Project Lead the Way. I know that that there is talk about. Our academy is a Project Lead the Way for your engineering academy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, enjoy your students and family success Thank you very much. best of luck in the future Thank you. Uh -huh. good, to see you. good to see you um this card you know i'm very confident how we're going to raise because of this team you know we're leaving out to texas uh next week on we july 14th which is a friday Thursday. so i'm very confident that you guys will help us you know kind of bring a trophy to and kind of bring you know some very good tech so you know, congratulations to you guys for putting the work in. You know, hopefully I can have fun time with you guys and win a couple of trophies in Texas. So. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present you the 2016 Solar Car Challenge Solar Falcon Team. <laughs> Give me a little interview about Armando, the driver. Oh, he's my son. He's uh -huh. the driver. Yeah, he's uh -huh. very he's smart. Very excited about it? Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh-huh. Uh, do you go to Texas with them or no? Uh, no, I have to work. Yeah, <laughs> like all of us. Yeah. Uh-huh. Is he um, interested in uh, electronics and mechanics? and? Uh, in the mechanics. The mechanics part yeah. of it. Uh huh. He he had a welder, and uh, he he's uh, he fixed many things. Uh huh. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Well, congratulations having a thank you a boy on that winning team. Thank you. You're welcome. Do I'm what? so proud of him. He's yeah. my life. He's the best song for. Uh. For me, he's the best. I love him. Uh huh. <laughs> and a smart boy too. Oh yeah, he's an excellent song. Uh huh. Yeah, and a student and person, he's, he's the best for me. I'm so proud of him. Okay, and Ricardo, what's your role? What's your job on this car? Um, so I primarily worked more on the computer side of the car. So I didn't work too much physically, but I did create the entire model of the car using Inventor, which is a computer-aided design software. And I also worked on logistics and navigation aspects by looking at topographical maps and different navigational maps and tools that we'll use so that we can navigate the car easily. Mm -hmm. And uh, what year are you in high school? I just finished my 11th grade, so I'm going to be a senior next year. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Big man on campus next year. Uh-huh. And you have enjoyed this program? I 
really, really have. I, I was a little doubtful at first because I, I didn't know if I would fit in or not. But I, I know now that I definitely did and I will continue to do this next year. Uh-huh. And then college comes after that. Yes. So what are you thinking about that? Um, I'm thinking about either going and studying maybe mechanical or automotive engineering or something like that that still involves designing cars and yeah, other things like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you've got all this experience with computers, and uh, we're headed for the self-driving car. I can't wait. I have a chauffeur. <laughs> but you'll probably design it. So best of luck. Thank you. And I'm very happy to meet you and your mom. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, when I first started this program, there was this young kid who was always hanging around. And it's like, well, what's he doing? Oh, that's Alex's brother. Oh, OK, fine. So instead of sitting around, put him to work. And we did. Whatever we asked him to do, he would do. And then we said, you know, we should put him in a little bit of leadership position because he's really good. And within three months, he was assistant CEO. So I'll show you, he's one of those kids that comes along once in a lifetime. I have watched this student grow into such an amazing man. And I love him like a son. And I would do anything in the world for this kid. He's just fantastic. I am so proud of him. I've watched him grow into the strongest, most put together man I've ever seen in my life. And I have such bright hopes for his future. I know he will do well. So, Brian, keep up here. This is a very special one. Thank you. did nothing other than explain to you how to approach a problem. And something that's really important, at least from my perspective as a Lockheed Martin executive, it's not just about what you're building. It's putting the plan together, it's executing the plan, and as you so eloquently put, figuring out what happens because the plan never works, right? So I am very, very impressed. Not only that you were able to conceive of and build a, a car, but they, all of the skills that really matter, not only for building a car, 
the skills you're going to need in school, in life, and to work for Lockheed Martin, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very honored to give you guys a plaque today. Um, before I do that, though, I, I always forget not only was Lockheed there to support you, but you clearly had um, support from family, from teachers, from um, the community. Um, so it's not only dreaming big, but it's a collaboration and finding out a way to get others to help you. So it's not just the teamwork amongst yourselves, but it's the teamwork and working with the community around you. And this is the best example I've ever seen of accomplishing such a great goal. So congratulations to the team. And on behalf, on, behalf of, on, on behalf of Lockheed Martin, um, we are very, very proud of our logo, which is a skunk. We are the skunk works. And so I very proudly present you with the Lockheed Martin skunk. In the, in the miles you have ahead, and I really can't wait to see the car next year. Congratulations. Next, I'd like to bring up just a couple of speakers, um, really mentors that really helped us out throughout the years, and you know, kind of saw us for like our lowest points, our highest points. These people really taught us. Um, a lot in the in the years. So the first one I would like to represent, uh, the first one I'd like to bring up is from the spaceship company, which is Cisco Virgin Galactic, uh, Steve Erickson. Well, I was thinking about making a speech, but instead, uh, uh, Christina and uh, Antec and Betsy. Um, and Frank Peatlaw, or uh, Pete Buck, Pete Law is another guy. <laughs> but uh, Pete Buck said, Steve, you gotta see what these people are doing. And uh, I had the TV view of the world of what high school is or isn't. And uh, Pete got me down here, and I saw what was going on, and it just brought tears to my eyes. Because uh, look at this team over here, and every one of them turns wrenches, cuts metal, does pot rivets, glues on solar panels. Uh, these kids can do about anything if you give them the opportunity to do it. And for those people I mentioned, thank you for letting me help. So, enough of the tears. <laughs> it's also, you saw pictures of Jay Leno up there, good timing. And I think it was his predecessor that said, never follow children or animal acts. But I get to follow Melody. <laughs> and, uh, Say nice words about Melanie too. She is the real deal. She's the best person. She's at the right place at the right time, the right attitude. too. This is an awesome lady, guys. So uh, for all you students out there, get her email. <laughs> Ask her for an internship. Because <laughs> she can do it. <laughs> so great, great to see you, Melanie. She's one of my favorite people. I've known you 24. Five. I'm not that old. Not yeah. <laughs> I knew your mom 30 years ago. <laughs> but uh, and I see Kevin Kelly is a new addition to your, your staff here. Another person that is absolutely outstanding. <laughs> we had something to do with him getting hired at Lockheed years ago. And uh, I always try to take credit for that. But uh, you students too, this is a guy who knows how to solve problems, how to execute, how to put a plan together, how to fix the plan because it's never perfect, and execute. So Kevin, I'm in tears to see you here, and uh, this place, eat him up guys. These are really good people. So uh, I wish I was on any of those lists, but that's my goal. It's been a lot of fun helping you guys, TSC. Why are we doing this? Uh, you kids, I mean, it's hard to call these guys kids when you watch them work. Uh, you're a future. Uh, we need people, we need engineers, we need supervisors, we need fabricators in industry. Uh, it's a very short supply out there. And uh, I worked 25 years or so at Lockheed, 
we import a lot of people from out of the area and we have all these resources here that we want to cultivate and make this a community. So keep it up, kids. Um, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose, it's how you fight the fight and how you execute and how you solve your problems. And keep smiling. Love you guys. That was beautiful, Steve. And we will keep smiling. <laughs> so our next speaker is obviously a representative director of a career in technical education. Um, you know, we really could have done this without the help of our sponsor, uh, sponsors. Um, you know, Lockheed being one of them. But if it wasn't for you know our district and everybody helping out, it it really would uh, would never get done. These guys are you know they really work with our students and. Um, they, when they start seeing you not as kids, but as individuals, as showing you the same respect, that's really when you see it as, you know, they really do respect you. And so our district's one of the best. So I'd like to bring up Ms. McKinstry here to give a few words. Um, round of to anything that's already been said. Um, the wonderful words from the students and Dr. Vieira and Lockheed and all the people that really make this project work. But I would like to say a few things as far as, you know, the community, a lot of times we hear from the community that we don't have technical education anymore. <laughs> and we still have technical education and this is the key ideal technical education learning environment to build a solar car. Um, and that has changed because the 21st century, and I think the people at Lockheed can tell us the spaceship company, needs different work habits and work ethics and to work in a different environment than they did in the previous century. And what we're doing with a solar car where, we, where the students create and they collaborate and they communicate and they, you know, work together to form a project and to fail and to fail again and to figure it out and to work on solutions, that's the best kind of learning that we can provide for them and prepares them for the environment or whatever their choices are out of high school. And I would say, you know, I was an integral part of the first year team, not unfortunately as integral part of the second year team. And the first year team built you know, the car worked on it, um, really went where no man had gone before. <laughs> um, but sometimes it's harder to be a second year team than it is a first year team. Because you have to sustain that energy and enthusiasm and look at things different and refine things and transition things. And you have a whole different skill set and goals to meet. And I just would like to applaud as much as I appreciated the first year team to pave the way that the second year team and what they have done with this car and their perseverance and determination really does take a round of applause. So and again just thank you for everybody that has um, participated in this um, effort. You know, education is a joint effort, and the more that we do this with our community, the more that the economic development of the Antelope Valley region will prosper, and it will just benefit all of the residents. So thank you. It's very amazing the time right now, seeing all of you guys here, hearing the words that you have to say about ourselves. Um, it's quite a the way that you guys, you know, kind of respect us. Uh, it's really great because it just pushes us to keep going forward knowing that you, know, you guys are actually impressed with what we have to do. Um, our, next, our next speaker probably knows us better than anybody. He's hanged out with us multiple times, uh, put us up with long hours, MC7. Um, you know, I just apologize to his wife, sorry we keep him up so late. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's really there for us when, every time we get a problem or every time, you know, it's just maybe something's not right. You know, personally, you know, he's he's always been there. I can really call him a very popular figure. Like, so I would like to welcome um, Ann Tech. I'm not gonna say that last name. <laughs> or as better everybody else knows in here, Mr. I.
Guys, it takes community to bring up a child. And you guys are a community. None of this would have been possible without you guys, all of you, every single person. There are so many people here I want to thank. It would take me hours and hours. Every person at the district office, every person here on campus. There's so many people that are so integral to this program. I just want to thank you all. But there are two gentlemen I do want to single out tonight that have been by my side from the very beginning. Can I have John Calvert and Rumor Ryan just come up here, please? These two men have kept me going. They have always supported me when things were tough. Uh, they've always had my back. Uh, I just recently had surgery. These guys covered for me when I was out. I cannot thank these two men enough. They have done everything for me. They're always there. They're always working free hours. I mean, whatever I need, these guys have always had my back. And these, these men are, are just amazing. So I wanted to take this moment just to personally thank both of them for all they've done. So gentlemen, again, thank both of you. Thanks, John. I have to go back to the hospital. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Are you guys ready? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Woo! Everybody have the reveal. Get your cameras ready. Okay, students, so grab a piece. And on the count of three, I want you to take all those down. Okay, you guys ready? One, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, so our So just to give you guys a good information on the car, this year we're really focused on the weight. So uh, in the beginning of the year, the car weighed around 1,200 pounds, and now we brought it down to 10 to 1,060 pounds. I'd also like to thank uh, ABTA's graphic designer, Nick, for, uh, desi for designing the uh, for us. So feel free to take a look, feel free to uh, touch it. Just not too much. Oh, set them. Tell me how this all started. How did electric car come to you and your kids? For years and years, I've always heard through other teachers, administration, wouldn't it be nice to have a program where the students did all the work, were taken to a really high level of education, had community involvement, had parental involvement, and we were able to tie that into universities and everything else. But nobody could come up with an idea. Mm. Well, I taught chemistry and physics, and I just started teaching engineering, and I saw one of these solar cars at a, a show, I said, my kids can do that. Mm -hmm. And we did the research, and we got the program started, and I started lining everything up, and trying to get my admin to agree to let me build a race car, let the uh -huh. kids race it, yeah. yeah. But our whole policy is that as advisors and teachers, we don't touch this. Everything is done by the student. They uh -huh. design it, they build it, they weld it, they wire it, they drive it. Uh -huh. We just tell them, figure it out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it's worked. Uh, yeah, I think we've got a pretty yeah. good one here. <laughs> Somebody knows how to do something. Yeah, luckily we've had great sponsors that have been experts in various fields. Yeah. They've come and they've helped us out, they've mentored the children and, and really shown them what it needs to be competitive on the real world. Sure. Now, what's going to be the future for, for this project? This is a brand new car I see, but... Are you going to build a new car every year? Maybe? Every two years we'll be building a brand new car. Okay. This one actually retires at the end of this race. Oh, really? This becomes our PR car. You'll see this in various locations around the Animal Valley. Sure. Uh, car dealerships, museums, stuff like that. 
And then we'll be starting a carbon fiber composite car. Oh. And that's called the E car. Mm -hmm. Cars total weight will be around 400, 500 pounds. It'll seat two people, a oh. navigator and a driver. And the solar array will actually be on the trailer, and the car will have exchangeable battery packs. Oh, interesting. All uh, promising technology. And it's going to be really neat. Sure. It's, it's uh, a new division in the race. Mm -hmm. uh, not very many people have started building them. It's a lot more challenging, a lot more difficult, and of course, a lot more expensive. Sure. But the spaceship company is donating lots of carbon fiber and all the technology and information for us to learn how to work in carbon fiber because there is not any high school I know of in California that works in carbon fiber. Right. We'll be one of the first to do it. Aha, uh -huh, I see. All right, well, and that'll be a much lighter car. Yep, and we're going to be uh, doing researching aerodynamics to come up with the ultimate aerodynamically designed car. Mm -hmm. uh, weight will be extreme factor. We want the car as light as possible, so we'll be working in aluminums, uh, lightweight metals, yeah. and putting two passengers in, making sure they're comfortable. Uh-huh. Who, or I should say, what organization uh, encourages high school students to race cars. This is actually a very, uh, very large corporation called the, the Solar Car Challenge. It's uh, not for profit. And it's run by uh, Dr. Lehman Marks, who actually got into solar car racing when he was teaching at college. He built a team, then he started teaching some high school students, and they built a high school team, and he said, you know, there's not really any uh, enough races in America. So he actually started one, and it's the biggest, high, it's the only high school students allowed, right. but it's the only national race that high school students compete. Sure. Once a year? Once a year. Uh-huh, and this year, like last year in Texas. Yeah, we started in Fort Worth, and we're going to be racing all the way up to Minneapolis. Uh-huh. Well, Randy Scott uh, got me interested in this, and he's going to go along and hopefully send me some video clips and stills that we can publish. So we're looking forward to it and we wish you all the best. Thank you much, sir. You Glad bet. To meet you. Mm. And you're the navigator. What does that mean? So what we do, well, our company is called Logistics and so we plan out the whole map of the routes and everything and so we look at elevations and how much power we we'll be using and that's very important data for us because we have day-to-day -day races and we don't know how weather conditions are going to be. And so what I'm doing, I'm going to be in the lead vehicle and we're leading that and we're going to tell them instructions on where to go. I see. And how do you do that? Do you uh, have uh, communication with the driver directly? Yeah, we, have like, we have radios that yeah. we're going to be using and transmitting back and forth from the driver to also Brian, the CEO, and he's making all the decisions for this. So it's very important that we keep communication. Uh huh. Uh huh. Have you done the navigation last year? No, not last year. I don't think they had one because it was around the oval track and this oh, race yeah. is cross country. Yeah. So we're going through states that we don't even, we haven't been to and everything. Okay. It's a really good opportunity. Are you going to run over the track first and then up to Minneapolis and come back? <laughs> Yeah, I feel like we're, no, it's, you take it day by day, so, oh. yeah, there's different routes, and they have different trailers, and like, you, they'll tell you where to trailer, and also oh, I see. Yeah, like for each different day, there's a certain amount of points that you go through, uh -huh. and like some days we're going through three different states, or two different states, or maybe just one, Yeah. so yeah, it's, it's all step by step. I, I, I see, so you take it in pieces, and... Uh, have it on your computer, I guess, and do it. Well, best of luck. Thank you. And uh, you'll come back an, an expert for the Antelope Valley. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. A while ago, and uh, tell me a little bit about the car. Uh, speed. Last one went 45 miles an hour. What, what about this one? Well, the speed, we're actually still going at 45 miles per hour, but we're using less energy to push the car. So, you know, maybe we go 40 miles per hour now, and we waste about maybe 30%. We're only wasting now 20 due to the weight that we've actually lost. So, I see. Great work. I see. Now, the panels, solar panels, tip. Yes. Uh, to they're a lot more thinner now. We did put aluminum to kind of support here. But the solar panels do tip over, so um, they kind of go at motion like that. So now we're able to track the sun. So every time we take a break, we're out eating lunch, and the sun's all the way over to the east. Our solar panels are now able to tip that, tilt that way. So we get the most amount of energy when we get back into the race. Got it, got it, got it. And uh, who make, makes these panels? 
Um, the panels we actually got from our sponsor at PFMG. Uh, they're the ones that Dornier is sponsored on. I believe, I can't remember the name, Panasonic, I believe they are. But uh, yeah, uh, a lot of the stuff here was donated by our sponsor, so we're really grateful for having them here. Uh, really grateful for helping out this program, this car, us working. You know, they would never help us out. They give us, they give us the parts, and we put it together. And how long are you going to be uh, on the uh, race? Uh, the race is about two weeks, so we're going on the 14th out there. So from the 14th all the way, I believe, to the 25th, the two weeks there. Um, we're just going to be non-stop racing. We're going to be traveling from Fort Worth, Texas, all the way up to uh, Minnesota. On the road, the car will be on public roads and everything. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you're going to, I presume, drive it there and then drive it back. I uh, mean, yeah, uh, trailer it we're there. We're trailering it there, and we're going to trailer it back, but that whole time we're, we're in the race, this car will never, we hope this car will never see a trailer. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. just keep running at it as far as that. Unless the race tells it to, I think they will. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're so far ahead. Uh-huh. Well, you've got a great team. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the team's very dedicated. I couldn't have done it without these guys helping me out. and uh, They're really the ones that put in the amount of hours given into it. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I just uh, did a story this week on Juno, which is orbiting around Jupiter. And that's a $1.3 billion project and 950 people on the team. And uh, that has gone where nobody has gone before. And I probably guess, I would bet that you and your team are going to end up in some projects like that. Yeah, um, definitely this first time being out in the race. Uh, we're taking a team of 10 kids at uh -huh. a car that costs around $100,000. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go where no Palmdale Falcon has been before. <laughs> and that's going to be a cross-country race. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, best of luck, and I hope you guys come back totally satisfied. I hope we do, too. Okay, Thank thanks. Uh -huh. Okay, And Fernando, what's your special expertise with the Falcon? I do, like my company, we work on all the electrical work and all the wiring on the car. Oh. So we can also, as you can see down here. Yeah. We work on this dashboard, we do all the meters. And I can turn this so you can see them. As you can see, we work with the meters to tell us our amperage, voltages, let us know when the car is about to die, if the secondary system needs to be switched out so we can power the horn and everything else. Sure. Sure, sure. And all this is being powered um, off of these batteries back here? Uh, the, these uh, batteries only power the motor, like the main components, oh. while the battery in the front um, only oh. powers the meters. Because it, uh, to, there's some rules that have it so that the primary system can only power the propulsion parts of the vehicle, while the secondary system has to do with all the gadgets and meters. And sure, like sure. Interesting. And uh, does this use special kind of wiring, aircraft wiring or car wiring? We just use simple 18 gauge wiring for the secondary system. There <laughs> is special wiring for the primary system though, which is, can hold with high amperage. Sure, and uh, did you come with a skill set? Did you know about electrical? No, when I first started I knew nothing about <laughs> what my company would do. And then they put me as lead, so I was like... You had to learn it. Yeah, I learned a lot though. Uh -huh. Terrific. Well, best of luck on the race. I'm very glad to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you too.